Learning German can be many things. It can be annoying, frustrating, infuriating, time-consuming, overwhelming, tiring, insanely difficult, and full of tongue twisters. I mean, has anybody ever tried to say Streichholzschachtel? Streichholzschachtel. There, I finally said it. I know German can be a very stubborn language to master. But over the years, I have identified a few classic patterns, which if you know how to spot, will get you a long way in Germany. Here are my top three German survival tips. Number one, master die Wurzel. In my experience, grasping how Germans use small words in sentences is a very useful skill. My top picks. Doch is a very diverse word, and knowing when to say it is key. Here are a few examples. Das Wetter ist doch schöner geworden, als ich gedacht habe. Du kommst doch nicht, doch ich komme. Du hast doch gesagt, dass du kommst. Er ging über die Straße, um sein Geschenk zu kaufen, doch dabei fiel ihm ein, dass er eigentlich noch zu seiner Mutter muss. It is impossible to translate doch into just one word because it has many uses. At best I would say that sometimes it works as a confirmation and sometimes as a contradiction. Nein, doch. Nein, doch. Nein, doch. Oder. I was taught that oder is mainly used like the English or and if capitalized it refers to the German river oder. But colloquially, Germans use this word a bit like English question tags. Du kommst heute, oder? Das ist echt cool, oder? The German word nein is often shortened in different ways. Ne, nö, ne, na. And na works perfectly fine as both a greeting and a response to it. Na? Na? Number two. Learn the pronunciation. Convincing Germans can be easier if you can nail the pronunciation or Aussprache. 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 This can be challenging because there are a few German sounds that can be quite hard to pronounce. Like the German R, which is very different from the three Bengali R's I learned as a child in India. Ro, ro, ro. In comparison, the German R is closer to a growling sound. Rose, Rache, Resturlaub. Also, Hello. every time I board a bus or tram, I repeat the names of the stops in my head and try to imitate the announcer. Nächste Haltestelle, Würziger Straße. Würziger Straße. Würziger Straße. This is very useful to learn how to pronounce the different syllables correctly. Just remember to not practice this out loud. Nächste Haltestelle, Rheinauer Hauptzugang. You may attract some stairs if you do. Rheinauer Hauptzugang. Number three. Don't take the German grammatical gender too seriously. In German, every noun has a gender which decides its article. Der for masculine nouns, die for feminine, and das for neutral ones. Yep, it's truly a jungle out there. People who learn German as a foreign language know how traumatizing memorizing all the articles can be. In the beginning, I tried learning them all. But then, I soon realized that nobody was really judging me for using the wrong article. In fact, what really mattered was that I know how to use the correct nouns. So don't beat yourself too much up about these articles. And for some words, even the Germans don't seem to agree on which article to use. We hit the streets and ask them to identify the articles for these nouns. Die Krake. D -d Der Krake. Die Krake. Der Schlüsselbund. Das Schlüsselbund. Der Schlüsselbund. Die Joghurt. Der Joghurt. Das Joghurt. Der Joghurt. Äh, der Wachs. Das Wachs. Der Wachs. Such confusions occur because some nouns have more than one gender. And sometimes it can even be perfectly correct to use any of the three articles. How fluent am I today in German? Boah. Hä? Ach. I would say I'm fluent in Alltagsdeutsch or everyday German and learning new tricks all the time. What tricks do you use? Share them in the comments. We could use them for another episode of Meet the Germans. See you next time.